What is up guys, it's Kanzo here and today I'm going to be talking about my honest opinion on Pokemon Sword and Shield. I personally played through Pokemon Sword, so yeah, I'm just going to be talking about what my opinion is on the game from start to finish, about the characters, the battling system and comparing it to previous games, but I'm not going to be going too in depth like talking about the whole Pokedex situation or the um, breeding or Ivy training or that stuff, just generally the gameplay of what I experienced from start to finish. So hopefully you guys enjoy. Without further ado, I want to talk about the main rival for the game, which is a hop. I feel like this is an underrated character and I'm going to explain why in a small amount of time. Um, and like previous games where your rivals are like blue, for the prime example in Pokemon um, Red and Green, in my opinion, um, red, uh, red, fire, red, leaf, green and, and blue. Um, and yellow he he's fundamentally better in my opinion he may not have been a difficult rival to overcome and he definitely was not a pushover like um, what's his name the, the rival from Sun and Moon I have a picture of him up um, but I definitely feel that he was fundamentally better he grew with you as the game progressed he was there from start to finish he was important to the story um, he was fundamentally challenged as he lost he didn't win every bout when it just somehow happened to lose to you every time you encountered. Like he actually lost to other people. Um, you saw how he was challenged after he lost the bead. Um, he even changed his team around to try and like see if that would help him win. And you know he's generally just a good character. And I like the fact that they stemmed away from just the general trope of hey I'm gonna fight you here here here. And at the end of the game I'm gonna fight you. He was actually a very good rival in my opinion. Moving on to my next point, I want to talk about bead. Now, uh, I think it's how you say it, Beady or Bede, or Bede, but <laughs> this guy, one of my favourite, like, I'm going to say anti-rivals or antagonists for the game. He wasn't necessarily evil, but this character was just amazing. Like, I, I consider him the third rival instead of Marnie, and that's, that's my honest opinion. I generally feel like this character was actually amazing. Um, I love his design, the purple trench coat, everything about him was actually really cool. Um, and I got a lot of silver vibes from him from Pokemon Gold and Silver, you know your rival. I have a picture of him on the screen as well. Um, like he wasn't necessarily evil, but you know, he wasn't necessarily like, I'm here for you, kind of like how Hop is. So I did like the fact that his interactions with Hop actually affected Hop. Um, as you saw when he defeated Hop, Hop was actually scarred, like he didn't know what to do with himself. He was actually struggling throughout the game later on. Um, and even with that, BD had a lot of um, personal development throughout the game um, when he got disqualified from the championship and then he went down another route and I like that, even with Hop, when Hop becomes a professor later on, that's his aim now so I do like the fact that they, everyone's got their own goals and desires that they um, strive for. Moving on to my next point, Marnie. Now, I got a lot of X and Y feels from this character, I personally didn't like her, I actually like Piers a lot more. I feel like the dynamic between the brother and sister could have been a bit better. Um, and it was a bit random, like, oh hey, Pierce is your brother by the way, you know. And I did kind of put it together when I saw her team yell um, as I was playing. But I definitely feel like, even with her music, her music was amazing. Same with BD and Hop, but I definitely feel that she could have been executed better. Maybe in a the series they'll do something, but as for the game, I definitely feel like they could have done a lot better with her. Leon, this guy right here. So this is definitely going to be one of my favorite champions in Pokemon history. Even with Lance, I feel like Leon's just, I want to say a better version because he's a champion of the region, right? Similar to Lance, he's got Charizard, he's got a couple dragons. Um, and yeah, this guy, like he's, he's actually a champion. And what I mean by this is that he goes around the region, he interacts with the people, tries to solve problems. Le um, Lance did that with the Red Garuda situation, so I'll give props to him. But I definitely feel that like Leon was more involved in the game from start to finish. Granted, he's Hop's brother, but I definitely feel that like they executed Leon's character a lot better than any other champion. Talking about the gym leaders and the gym challenge, um, this region was actually quite different from others, in my opinion. It showcased, like, I did appreciate how they did, like, the whole football march at the start, where you get to see all, all of the gym leaders, apart from the 7th, walk onto the arena and say hey we're gym etc so I did appreciate that um, it, it brought a lot of tension to the game I think like oh I've got to beat these people like wow you know so it gave a lot of hype to the gym leaders um, and even with that like the gym challenges were quite standard um, so it was what you expected like you got to do a little tutorial during the gym 
um, I think it was the grass gym and you got to push all the woo-loo down um, so that was pretty cool but the actual gym battles I actually didn't I wasn't too fond of the first couple of gyms um, simply because the music wasn't that great in my opinion but I do like coming to the end of the game so when you're doing the essentially like the elite the elite four if you want to call it that the elite gym battle um, I do like the last kind of gym battles that you have against all of them that was really amazing um, even when you're like competing against your rivals like Hop, Marnie, um, Beely as well I did like the, the gym things then they were a bit more amped up and I did like those versions um, but as for like the actual gym designs um, and the gym leaders amazing Nessa amazing the rest of the gym leaders were amazing as well um, the fire gym leader I'm not sure what his name was I think it was Kabu reading his um, trainer card or his gym leader card was amazing knowing that he's from Hoenn that like stuff like that was really good I like hearing backstories about the gym leaders rather than them just being placed in the game you know moving on to my next point I actually want to talk about Rose so Rose is the chairman for the um, the league challenge I believe um, and he's essentially he is the antagonist of the story I'm not saying that he's essentially evil but he is like the person that you have to kind of like be essentially you can talk about team Yell being like the antagonist as well but they, they didn't really do anything that impactful in the game like they were just more hooligans like football hooligans I guess that's the vibe that they, um, they went with um, but Rose was more of the main antagonist similar to previous Pokemon games where you'd have people like Cephas, I've seen name Cephas or Cyrus from like Diamond and Pearl or G Giovanni in uh, Red and Blue from from the Kanto, from Kanto. Um, Rose he I feel like yeah again like one thing that they did really well with this game is that they incorporate the characters into the story from start to finish and it wasn't like other games where you just bump into them once or twice you battle them then when they're really weak and then at the end of the game you fight them again when they're trying to like resurrect the legendary or release it or something Rose was present throughout the game from start to finish as well um, you even get to meet him a couple times when he comes in a disguise with his uh, secretary when he's in glasses when he's wearing glasses to like wear a disguise right um, I believe that's in um, Ness's gym um, but yeah they, they did really well with Rose um, I did like battling him as well it was quite cool um, and I did like how he interrupted Leon's um, final battle against you which was pretty cool moving on to my next point uh, or my next character is Oliana now this is Rose's secretary I at no point during the game thought I'd be battling this woman like I <laughs> I had no idea um, and I just want to say which I didn't mention in previous points the music for each individual character is phenomenal I feel like they actually out have outdone themselves um, especially with Leon, Juliana, Rose, Hop, BD all of the music throughout the game um, was actually really really good I know Pokemon's just known for having really good music but I definitely feel that they went over and above this one um, but as a secretary I, I, I feel like she did a good job of just trying to like even when you went to talk to Rose during Nessa's like gym challenge or whatsoever she was kind of like trying to maintain the crowd and tell them to chill or whatsoever so she was quite good and then post game as well when you meet her in the cave that was pretty cool um, in the gal cave and she gives you Rose's card um, as an item just to let you know like what its background is where it comes from and yeah each character had very good development throughout the game so moving on to my next point I'm actually going to be talking about the legendaries um, I feel that Zakian and Zamazenta are actually really really well designed um, and I like the fact that they're introduced at the very beginning of the game um, you get the lore of them throughout the game and that also they're not just pulled out of thin air like oh by the way if you do this or go to this cave or climb this mountain you'll find them there they were introduced throughout the game and I didn't actually mind catching them once the game was completed um, it was actually pretty cool hearing like the lore about them, how they actually help the region. Um, like other games, like you'd have uh, Raikou, Entei and Suikun, like they weren't really explained, it was just like they're running around the region, go catch them. And it's like, why? But, you know, you just, <laughs> it wasn't really explained in my, it, for me personally, I didn't think it was explained well enough. Um, but these guys, they have good back to background stories, especially with Eternus and the whole dynamic situation. I definitely feel that. Um, especially with Apex Pokemon Sword, I just love Zaki and the design. 
Um, it's, just, it's just an amazing Pokemon. Um, and yeah, I just never, I feel like these are one of or two of the best legendaries that they've actually introduced into the Pokemon franchise, simply because of just lore, how they interact, how you interact with them in the story, and yeah, everything so far about them has been really good in my opinion. Moving on to my next point, I want to talk about the Dynamaxing. Now, Dynamax and Gigantamax is a new feature that they've actually introduced into Pokemon um, in place of um, Z moves and Mega Evolutions. I personally was not a fan of Z-Moves and Mega Evolution, I didn't feel like that was very Pokemon-like. It kind of gave me like Digimon vibes with the whole Mega Evolution um, situation from like, when was it, X and Y onwards. Um, and even with Z-Moves, I, I did feel like it was a bit corny, I know it's kind of still like a children's game and that's fair enough, but they do try and cater for their older audiences. But Dynamax, in, like it actually feels cool. You know, I, I personally like it and Gigantamax where you're filming the different features if you've got the Gigantamax trait. Um, I didn't, they didn't need to rehash Charizard, that was kind of overused, but so far Dynamax is pretty cool and I like how it's actually intertwined with the main story. Um, as for the actual world map of the Gala region, it I, I, I feel like it, it was good. It's good so far. Well, I've, played, I've completed the game so it is good. But I definitely thought that it was oversold in the sense of I feel like the open world, the bits where people go um, outside of like Hammerlock um, to like do the raids and interact with the other players, and you know when you can battle someone that like, you can't catch if you're, you haven't got a certain amount of gym badges. I feel like that was they could have had a bigger area or allowed it in different places because. Once you complete the game, there's, there's practically, in my opinion, not much to do. Um, and just having those two areas, it's not that great, in my opinion. They could have done, they could have executed that better. And even with that, it's still a bit, a bit choppy, um, and it starts here and there. But it's a good idea. And yeah, so so far, that's just um, my opinion on the game as a whole. Hopefully, you guys um, enjoyed my opinion of what I thought of the game um, obviously I completed it I'd say in about a week um, but overall I feel like the game was good like it, it, it came away from the general trope of just get badges beat your friends and then you know become the champion like even after you become the champion people interact with you differently when you're walking about in let's just regular city that people come up to you you can't actually talk to them but it'll be a speech bubble say oh hey champion hey hello um, even Leon addresses you as the new champion um, and when you re-challenge the challenge the, uh, the league champ the league challenge sorry um, it's a whole different vibe and I really liked it if you like this video don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and also post a comment down below what you think of my opinion if you agree with me or disagree and if you want me to continue doing these videos don't forget to you know, let me know. So yeah, thanks for watching. Peace.